what all the athletic training students that I have taught or mentored over the last few years from Michigan, Temple, I don't know if there's any proud Michigan people here, but uh, Temple, I see my Temple crew in the back, Westchester, Immaculata, Newman, please stand. <laughs> I want you to take a look around you and take a look at the people that we have here, okay? The gauntlet will be passed to you. Someday you will be up here, all right? I'm glad that you have brought some thinking to my, to my life. I've got much more from you than you could ever remember. Thank you. You know, part of service, as has been said, is that new lifelong friendships have been established and old ones strengthened. And again, thank you to all of my students. The slides? Nope. All right. <laughs> I have prepared some slides with names of people that have been an impact, <laughs> instrumental in my career. This does not impact or minimize their impact in my life, but only allows the time that would be constrained in naming every one of those. So thank you. I've just completed my 25th year at Widener. I've served two and soon to be three presidents, six ADs. 60 head coaches, hundreds of assistant coaches, and thousands of student athletes. So the outgoing President Jim Harris, Vice President Joe Baker, and our Athletic Director Jack Schaefer, thanks for allowing me to give back to the profession I love. Widener is family. It's truly... My family is here. They get me every time. <laughs> My parents are Janet. Thank you for rearing the eight of us, setting a great example. My mother is here with my brother Paul, a fellow Michigan alum. <laughs> Thank you for driving mom out so that we all could share in this. Our two sons are here, Joe, who will enter law school this fall, and Connor, a recent grad of Catholic University. Your mother and I could not be prouder of both of you. You have matured into such caring and fine young men. I gotta let you in a little family secret. We love the one with the beard the most. <laughs> in April of 1990, I had a bargain with my wife Monica to allow me to come and work pen relays. I promised her that I would bring her back to Philly for a visit. Who would have thought that four months later I would be hired at Widener and we would buy a house all within four miles of the hotel where I stayed. <coughs> She's been my rock and my best friend and as you heard last week we celebrated her 27th anniversary. She's completing her nurse practitioner degree this August, and I can't think of anyone that will be more caring and a passionate nurse practitioner. I love you. I would like to share with you my thoughts on be, being successful. I guess you could call this my Gettysburg Address. <laughs> a quote from Winston Churchill. Courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes for someone on the Pat's board to tell AJ to sit down so he can listen. <laughs> Message received loud and clear from all parts of the country. Rumor has it there's an over and under and I don't think anybody voted on the under. <laughs> <laughs> But I first need to thank and recognize two people. 
as they meet my metrics of success. Both have shaped our profession like any other two that I have known. I've had the pleasure of working with them, and more importantly, I can call them my friends. They will be stepping down from their positions in St. Louis. They won't like this, but it's my time. So please join me in thanking District 2 Director Mike Goldenberg and our own Jim Thornton, our NATA president. Thank you. In this modern age, it seems our business cards are no longer large enough to list all the letters behind our names. Tonight, I would like to propose yet one more credential the PHE. The PHE doesn't take five years to compete, neither dissertation nor research project, and best of yet, it costs nothing. The P stands for passion. John Bon Jovi said, nothing is as important as passion. No matter what you do, do it, do it with your life, be passionate. There's no question that each Hall of Fame member was and is very passionate about our profession, from politicians to physicians to athletic trainers. Having passion enhances the workplace, bolsters the boardroom, and captivates those committee meetings. It is this passion for what we do that drives us, that motivates us. I am a cradle Catholic, and in school the word vocation was often used to see if any of us would have that calling to the religious life. Merriam-Webster defines vocation as a strong desire to spend your life doing a certain kind of work. I have found that athletic training is my vocation. And I'm sure that many others would say the same. It's central to my core. What is your passion? Search for that position that is your passion, your vocation. I hope that it is athletic training because there is no better time to be an athletic trainer. When you do find that niche, give back in some way. For nearly 30 years, I have given back, and believe me, there is nothing more rewarding, no award, no certificate, no plaque, can duplicate the reward of serving others. The H stands for humility. Yogi Berra bantered, it's not the heat, it's the humility. John and I become the 49th and 50th members of this Hall of Fame that includes six physicians and one state senator. Author Simon Sinek said, humility, I have learned, must never be confused with meekness. Humility is being open to the ideas of others. Each of our Hall of Fame predecessors possessed this admirable trait. They listened and learned from others. They looked over the trees and outside the box. They learned and listened to make sure that the profession was in a better place after they left. Dwight D. Eisenhower's Secretary of Agriculture and the 13th President of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Ezra Taft Benson, said, pride is concerned with who is right. Humility is concerned with what is right. Just because people work for a common cause, it does not mean you will agree on everything, and you shouldn't. Ask anyone that served with Gary Hanna and me. Gary is one of the most humble people that I've served with, and it was an honor. We agreed that we needed to, be, to move our profession forward, but we saw a different pass for the same means. And boy, did we listen to each other, and those down the hall, and those two floors up. We battled. But by doing this, we looked at all angles, had a complete evaluation of the task at hand. We didn't care about who was right, we were concerned about doing what was right for you, the members. Humility kept us in check. Learn, listen, improve where you are. Don't be concerned with the credit, be concerned with the results. The last letter stands for enthusiasm. I've adopted a line coined by George Hassel, one of our vice presidents at Widener. When I'm asked, how was your day? I reply, I've never had a finer day. Your attitude and passion are infectious. It will be caught by all those that surround you. So in closing, Ralph Waldo Emerson describes enthusiasm the best. 
Enthusiasm is one of the most powerful engines of success. When you do a thing, do it with all your might. Put your whole soul into it. Stamp it with your own personality. Be active, be energetic, be faithful, and you will accomplish your object. Nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. So be passionate, be humble, be enthusiastic, 